Greetings, family, in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, this is the day that the Lord has made for us. It is a day full of praises, gladness, and joy. Uh, please do join me in worship as we worship with um, our beautiful sister, Kuchong Kosi.
and every morning. Father, I thank you. With all that I am, I thank you, Lord. You are wonderful and you are worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Be magnified. Always, always be glorified. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, wasn't that a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord with that worship by Kujo? Her music is available in all social media platforms. Please do support her. Now for this exciting part, I am joined by two wonderful ladies. They are women of God, anointed ministers of the gospel. I'm joined by Pastor Sander in purple and by Pastor Mutla. Thank you ladies for joining me today. It's Thank great. you so much. So, today we're going to be discussing women in power in the Bible, right? How, how can we exercise the freedom and the dignity that we have received from Christ? So, for the sake of our discussion for today, we will be focusing on a certain woman mentioned in the book of John chapter 4, um, the woman who is known by a, some, the name, not known by a name, but is known as a Samaritan woman. Mm. A woman that, met, that Jesus met at the well, and he asked for a glass of water, or asked her for water. I was intrigued by the woman's response to Jesus, though. He, she says to Jesus, how is it that you, being a Jew, a Jew would ask me, a Samaritan woman, for water? Mm. And I thought, but it is obvious that you are a woman you are a Samaritan woman. Mm. So, Pastor Sander, why do you think that this woman had to exercise this shock from just the fact that Jesus asked her for water while we all know that where Jesus was, he, he had nothing that he could use to draw water with. So it just made sense that he would ask her for water because she had something to help with. All right. Well, let's take it back a bit because just to give it a history and context regarding the Jews and the Samaritans, the Jews and the Samaritans were enemies, if I can put it that way. And mm. what made them enemies is that they were judging each other concerning the laws and that, that this one was not was improper. They were not following the laws properly. We as the Jews are a, a better nation. So first of all, when Jesus was traveling, he needed to go through Samaria. But usually the Jews did not use that route. Mm. They, used, they used to go through Jericho, right, to go to Galilee. But he said he needed, and, you had, and, and this was definitely a divine appointment because it's a shorter route, it's straightforward, but they never used to take that route to avoid even talking to Samaritans. Mm. Number two, Jews, and uh, Jesus being a Jew and a rabbi, he was not allowed to talk to women, even in public. So there were two things here. She's a Samaritan woman. Mm. On top of that, Jesus is a rabbi talking to a woman in public. And these are things that were foreign and not even allowed. So I, I'm not sure that the woman was so surprised that this man is actually breaking all custom and mm. talking to me. Who am I? You know? Mm -hmm just to prove the point that God is not limited by any culture or rules or anything that we deem of importance. When he wants to do something, he will definitely follow through with it. Amen. Amen. So God is truly not a respecter of men, like yeah, the scripture sure. said, because mm. she, he could have um, not spoken to her 
because she he understood his standing plus this woman's social standing was not a, a, a glamorous one it was not that one that mm. people actually long for or, or look up to sure and now i'm gonna jump a couple of, script, of mm -hmm. verses and jump to yeah. verse 16. Jesus becomes personal now with this woman. Mm. He says to the woman, go call your husband and come here. Mm. Then the husband answered and said, I have no husband. Then Jesus said, you said, well, I have no husband. For you have five husbands and he whom you now have is not your husband. Mm. Is you... This you have said truly. Mm. That is Jesus' response to this woman in verse 18, which makes us realize that for Jesus to be able to deliver a certain gift, because mm. if you read prior scriptures, Jesus said you don't realize or understand the gift mm. that you have. So it, to me, it looked like for Jesus to be able to reach this woman at the point where he's able to deliver this free gift of salvation that he came there to deliver. Mm. He had to break something in that person's persona or he had to deal with like deeper wounds in this woman's personal life mm. so that she can be able to hear. So Pastor Mutla, why would you say warranted Jesus to address this woman in such a personal manner? Amen. It's such a beautiful story for me, or a, a beautiful depiction of the love of Jesus. Um, as, as Pastor Asanda has said, that he traveled the short way, but through the enemy's camp in a way, because of the rivalry between the Jews and the Samaritans. And it also reminds me of that uh, parable of Jesus when he says the good neighbor, who was a good neighbor, and he intentionally said the Samaritan man came and rescued the guy who was robbed on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And he just perplexed the, the disciples a bit to say, can anything good come out of Samaria? Because they were half cast a half case kind of um it was a, an ethnic war to some degree because the samaritans were like a break off of the jews they were mixed breed with like um the gentiles so some jews left and they went to samaria and they they intermarried and produced samaritans and so the jews really believed that we are a superior breed of jews and you are substandard and so that rivalry it amazes me because we see that even today where it's an obvious or it's a well-known unsaid but it's there that indeed these are our enemies we are better because it's even said that we even see it in in christian circles where people believe because i go to a specific church or i sit with a specific people therefore i'm superior even in uh, our faith in the lord so it's amazing that jesus appointed this time to break that mindset because what's amazing even further is that jesus came to break tradition of men mm. so what what seems to be normal she came to announce to question to say is this the kingdom of god is it how it's supposed to be and why are you doing certain things and this really just speaks to me personally to say for jesus to do that he has to break what you think is normal mm. and it, it goes to say to this woman it, he needs to be personal because he's our personal savior in the end mm. And he was laying foundations of that salvation. And I think I, I might get ahead of myself, but I'm excited at how this woman responds. But Jesus is, is personal. He knows us personally. He created us for a purpose. And this woman's, um, they call it a Kairos moment, where it's an appointed time that really shifts your life completely. So by him getting into her personal issues, uh, it, it sort of gave he, uh, her perspective to see, to come to her next conclusion, which says, I perceive that you are a prophet. Mm. So it had to come from her, to, for her to see that who she's speaking to. I think a few scriptures earlier, Jesus says, if only you knew who was before you, because um, yes. I can give you water that won't run dry. And uh, for her to come to that conclusion, Jesus had to bring out because sometimes you can think that no, this person just mm -hmm. might might have heard something. But she, he knew details that she knew it's not something you can just get off of the street. That's true. That is powerful. Pastor Sander, 
Is there something that you want to add into this? You know what I like with, mm. with Jesus' response mm. when the woman said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Mm. He said, I am he. Well, in the English translation, it says, I am he. But when you study it in the original translation, which is the Greek translation, mm. Greek doesn't have the word he. So it says, I am. Mm. Which takes me to Exodus. Mm. When Jesus was, I mean, God was speaking to Moses at the mountain. And Moses mm. says, who should I say um, it said, has sent me? Mm. And God said, I am. And that's where this, um, when I read this beautiful piece of scripture with the response of Jesus coming to this woman that I am. Mm. For me, I am means whatever it is that you need for your healing, for your salvation, whatever it is that you need to remove the stigma from this person. Because this was, this was a stigmatized woman because of the lifestyle that she led. But for me to lead, to remove that, I'm glad that you acknowledging that I am the prophet, mm. which makes me whatever it is that is needed in your life to bring solution. What can you say on the woman of God? You know, there's two things here, woman of God. I, I, Jesus is such a, you know, there's so much love in all of this because mm. he knew this woman's story, but yeah. he gave her the opportunity to give him the answer. Yeah. Where is your husband? He already knew that this woman doesn't have a husband, but he wanted to give her the opportunity to converse with him and to, for her to tell her side of the story, mm. which is so beautiful because he was basically stooping down to her level. Mm. And even her response, as you both have clearly said, that I perceive there was a, a knowing inside of her that I'm obviously not speaking to an ordinary person. Mm. Because in all honesty, on top of him being a Jew, him being a rabbi, him coming into Samaria, he's speaking to a woman who he knows that this woman doesn't even have a husband and the man that she's currently with is not even a husband but still he's engaging and giving an opportunity to talk to me that just shows the beauty of god because even in our misgivings even in the things that make us lose our confidence he's still there mm. he gave us the opportunity and the platform to converse with him you know Amen. That's the beauty I, I find in all of this. Amen. Amen. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing that is to be found by Christ and to be found in Christ. So my question to both of you, you will just give each other a turn is, at what point would we say this woman attained her full freedom? And at what point do, would we say she began to exercise this freedom that she had received in Christ. And how did that uh, freedom affect the community that this woman came from? Amen. So I'll start with you, Pastor. Maybe Anita. we can just read forward to find out what happens after the conversation between them. Mm. Um, I think we stopped at 18, so we can go to 19. It says, the woman says unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Amen. Amen. So that, that also goes back to, to the, the rivalry between them, that their forefathers, it's a, it's, a, it's a war that our forefathers believe we should worship at this specific mountain. But Jesus, you being a Jew, you believe that worship is to take place in Jerusalem in the temple. And I think that's, that's what Jesus came to demolish as well, that mindset to say. He says in the next scripture, Women believe me in 21. The hour comes when you shall neither in worship in this mountain nor at Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So it comes to, to, to sort of stamp what he came for, to say mm. that worship will no longer be in a physical specific place, but that it will be where you are because you will then be my temples. So it, he's introducing salvation and the thought that uh, once the Holy Spirit comes, then it doesn't matter where you are. Where you are, there will I be in your midst. Mm. Amen. Awesome. Pastor Sandra, and add on on that. 
Yeah, I'm just going back to 21, when Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. He mm. still addressed her as woman. Mm. He took her, he, he, he treated her with dignity, mm. despite knowing her circumstances. And he continues, I'm, gone, I'm skipping now, to, 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 to 23, where he says, But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. So as Pastor Mutla said here, God was showing her that things have changed. Things are changing. Things have changed, actually. I'm, I'm introducing a new dispensation where it's not about the place of worship, but it's about the condition of your own heart and mm. the relationship be between us. Because that, that, that's the intimacy that he came to introduce. And this woman said in, 20, in, 20, in, 20, in 25, the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, right? Who is called Christ. When he comes, he will, he will tell us all things. Remember, this is a Samaritan woman and they only believed in the five books of Moses, right? They were not reading all the books. They just believed in the five book of Moses. But they stood on the fact that the, this Messiah is coming and they believed that, that when the Messiah comes, all of these issues will be sorted. So they were looking forward mm -hmm. to this point in their lives when the Messiah would come to reveal himself to them and to restore them and the relationship that they had. And that's exactly what Jesus came to do. That is awesome. Mm. That is pain. That's beautiful. Especially because I, I detect that Jesus somehow was breaking the culture or the mm. traditional behavior or patterns that were governing these two nations or kingdoms at that time. Sure. Because it was a matter of we are better because mm. we are not mix, mixed with foreigners and we are pure so god talks to us better so he the worship is done better on our side than in there but jesus goes to the marginalized mm. he goes to to the people that are not respected or looked at as some people of value or important people and this was indeed the breaking point for this mm. woman this was the turnaround when she re realized that I cannot be bound anymore. Sure. Mm -hmm. I am now. I have now received uh, freedom, and I like what happens um, when you go further. I think it's in verse twenty-eight. No, in, actually, let me just go to verse twenty-nine rather, because in verse twenty-eight it talks about this woman leaving the jars and just running back to to her community. But when she gets there, the nice thing that I like about this woman is she went and addressed men. Mm. Mm. She didn't go look for other women to address. She went and addressed men and said, come and see the man mm. who has told me everything about my life. Mm. We're going to carry on from this point after a short break. Amen. So... Pastor Mutla, in view of what we just discussed, what would you like to leave our viewers with? Mm. That was just powerful, woman of God, what you shared about the woman speaking immediately after hearing the good news from Jesus himself, that Jesus is the Messiah and that worship will no longer be important where you do it. Uh, what will be important is that you worship in spirit and in truth. That she went to the men in the town to speak to them. And this just testifies to me of her faith that she was able to receive the good news from Jesus um, about salvation, about uh, what Jesus came to fulfill as the Messiah, the promised Messiah. So it tells me that she knew what the Messiah's purpose would be when he does eventually come. Uh, she had heard the word of that, uh, the meaning of the Messiah and what he would do. And he, she believed it because, because she, had, she believed it. When the Messiah presented himself, she was able to receive him because in her heart she was prepared by hearing the word already. So it just testifies to me of her faith that I think sometimes I might have missed in reading this, this, um, this scripture. Wow, that is beautiful. Pastor Sander, 
any nibble that you would like to leave our listeners with today? I think she said it all, but just to <laughs> add my two cents with on this one, I'm taking it back to, 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 to 28 when it says the woman then left her water pot, mm-hmm. went her way into the city and spoke to the men, right? Remember, this woman came to the well with that water pot mm. and it's something that she was very comfortable with. Mm. When Jesus asked her for a drink, she didn't say, well, here, here's my water pot. She was, so, she was holding it dearly to her heart and she was like, how are you going to draw water? You know. Mm. So w- when we meet Jesus, even the things that we hold on to and are familiar to, we let them go, which is exactly what this woman did. She never took this water pot, she left it there. She didn't even care if he uses it or if he doesn't, but she needed to go and testify. Mm. But that's that's the beauty of what happens when we encounter Christ. Our lives are never the same. Mm. So I I just love that part because it just shows that there's no way you can come in contact with the Messiah and remain the same. It's not possible. Amen. That is beautiful. That is truly awesome that the minute you encounter Christ, you are able to take off every load or burden that you were carrying or anything that was obstructing you to fulfill what you had been preordained before creation. Because all of us are created to serve purpose. Mm. So this woman, the minute she attained freedom from Christ, she was able to drop every heavy load Mm. and run with what God had for her in store. That was beautiful. Thank Mm. you so much for joining me tonight. Only a privilege. Amen. Amen. We will do this again, surely. Now, family, we want to thank you. May the Lord bless you. May he shine his face upon you until we meet again on this very same platform. May the Lord bless you when we carry on or pick up with this very same ladies from where we left on. Have a blessed day, Father. Amen.